I think it's just the most challenging thing we do as uh, humans, putting people into space. It's technically complicated. It, you know, those rocket motors and uh, spacecraft basically operate at the st extremes of what is possible. And uh, that's what, you know, ch excites me about it is really the challenge and, you know, how difficult it is. way I was changed really is with my perspective on Earth, you know, getting to see the planet for that long of a period of time, see how fragile the, the atmosphere is, uh, you know, see the devastation in the rainforest in the, in the uh, 17 years that I had flown in space, much different rainforest in 2016 and in 1999 on my first flight. Um, and then, you know, you look at land masses and you don't see countries because you don't see political borders like we think of the planet. When we think of a globe, we think of the countries on them, but you don't see that from space. So, you know, it gives you the sense that we are all in this thing called humanity together. The world is a lot smaller place when you look at it from space than people realize. The space for night on the French pavilion is from October the 15th to October the 28th. We will have two days, very important days, our light speed inspiration days. The first one is on the 20th and we will have all the afternoon open to the grand public. It will take place on the last floor of the French pavilion, we call it the Belvedere, the, first floor, the fourth floor. And we will have um, one of the great uh, French researcher called Alexis Payet, he's from the CNES, and he will do a master class with students from the Emirates Arab University all, all afternoon, so please come, it's open. And we have a second day on the 23rd, and it will begin at 10 up to 7, and here we will invite one of the most famous architects of the extreme environments, his name is Jacques Rougerie. He will present his uh, main uh, topic, which is a foundation that has created a um, competition, international archi architect competition, open to every country, and uh, will present the most uh, crazy and uh, famous project of uh, different uh, designers, architects, uh, artists about that. In the French Pavilion, we have different areas dedicated to space. The first one is one exhibition of temporary photographs. Uh, the pictures are from the CNES and from the European Space Agency. The second one is one of the capsules outdoor, also dedicated to space, where we have a meteorite. We have the suit of Thomas Pesquet, which is our um, godfather, and uh, a model of the rocket Ariane the Fifth. The third stop is here. Uh, in the second zone of the permanent exhibition. So we have the CNES uh, in the tra traveling into space in the loop video of about four minutes. We also have a third space here, which is the galaxy of tomorrow, where we have uh, different planets, the planets of science, the planet of education, and the planet of arts. And we also have an immersive capsule in the last floor of the building uh, made by the startup Imertech and where people can enjoy a very immersive experience through space. Yeah, you are really welcome to come to the French Pavilion on the 20th of October and the 23rd of October. Uh, this is the occasion also to meet uh, former astronauts like uh, Jean-François Clairvoy and Claudie Aigneret, so please you are very welcome. To So we're showcasing Voyager by Imertech. This is the first teleportation machine. And actually, I'm currently in space. And uh, during the two space days on the French Pavilion, the 20th and the 23rd, if I'm correct, uh, feel free to come and visit us. Uh, and uh, you will go on, on, on to the moon. During these two days, uh, people will be teleported to the moon. We have a 15 minutes video showcasing the first step of Americans there. This video is called First Step. And well, you'll be into rockets, you will lift off, 
stepping on onto the moon and going back to Earth. Le pavillon de France va beaucoup parler d'espace. On a déjà une présence permanente de l'espace dans notre scénographie, dans notre exposition permanente. Vous êtes ici dans l'espace 2 de notre exposition permanente qui est consacrée aux progrès liés à la mobilité. Et on commence, vous pouvez le voir derrière moi, avec le Centre national des études spatiales, le CNES, qui nous emmène dans un travelling à travers l'espace, qui nous fait assister au décollage d'Ariane 5, qui nous emmène ensuite faire un coucou à notre parrain qui est Thomas Pesquet, qui vient de prendre le commandement de la Station spatiale internationale. Euh, on va s'approcher ensuite de la Lune, on va se rapprocher également de Mars euh, et puis partir beaucoup plus loin vers euh, Jupiter, les anneaux de Saturne euh, avec voilà, des images qui sont vraiment euh, toutes nouvelles et qu'on a coproduit avec le CNES et, euh, et l'ESA. Le 20 octobre, ce sera toute une après-midi consacrée à l'espace où on invite un grand chercheur du CNES spécialisé dans l'étude de la vie sur la Lune et sur Mars, à dialoguer avec des étudiants de l'Université des Émirats Arabes Unis euh, sous la forme d'une masterclass et ensuite des projections de documentaires. Le deuxième temps fort, ce sera le 23 octobre. Donc là, c'est également sous la forme de conférences, de masterclass et de projections. Euh, on invite l'un des plus grands architectes du monde qui s'appelle Jacques Rougerie, qui est un architecte spécialisé dans les habitats de l'extrême, euh, à venir nous présenter les projets de sa fondation. Donc, il a ouvert une fondation avec un concours international euh, voilà, qui, qui va remettre sur le pavillon euh, et échanger dans ce cadre-là avec deux anciens astronautes qui sont Jean-François Clairvoy, qui sera ici sur Expo, et Claudie Aignoré, qui est la première femme astronaute qui sera connectée online. L'exposition de photographie entièrement dédiée à l'espace euh, parle de la beauté tout simplement des astres. Donc on est vraiment sur des images les plus poétiques possibles, euh, des planètes, des lumières, euh, des étoiles. Et ce sont des images qui nous viennent du CNES et de l'Agence Européenne Spatiale. Alors ce projet il s'appelle Voyageur by Immertech, c'est la première machine à téléportation. Elle prend la forme d'une micro-cabine de projection, avec une projection tout autour de nous, tout autour de nous et aussi sur le plafond, donc au-dessus de nous. Et l'objectif, c'est de téléporter les gens en leur présentant un contenu réalisé à l'endroit où ils veulent se déplacer, que ce soit au château de Versailles ou sur la Lune comme actuellement. Pendant la caserne thématique de l'espace, nous allons diffuser un contenu relatif au premier pas de l'homme sur la Lune. Donc on va montrer le voyage des astronautes, l'atterrissage sur la Lune et enfin le retour sur Terre. The space for night on the French pavilion is from October the 15th to October the 28th. We will have two days, very important days, our light speed inspiration days. The first one is on the 20th and we will have all the afternoon open to the grand public. It will take place on the last floor of the French pavilion, we call it the Belvedere. And we will have one of the great uh, French researchers called Alexis Payet, he's from the CNES and he will do a masterclass with students from the Emirates Arab University all, all afternoon, so please come, it's open. And we have a second day on the 23rd and it will begin at 10 up to 7 and here we will invite one of the most famous architects of the extreme environments, his name is Jacques Rougerie 
and uh, will present the most uh, crazy and uh, famous project of uh, different uh, designers, architects, uh, artists. We are showcasing Voyager by Imertech. This is the first teleportation machine. During these two days, uh, people will be teleported to the moon. We have a 15 minutes video showcasing the first step of Americans there. This video is called First Step. And well, you'll be into rockets, you will lift off, stepping your arm onto the moon and going back to Earth. With the UAE, uh, as was recently announced, uh, that uh, a mission will be sent uh, to uh, study Venus and the asteroid belt, which is a big, big challenge uh, that basically the UAE took on uh, after reaching Mars uh, on the 9th of Feb 2021. And with other countries also when it comes to outer space, I think it's, it's about better understanding our universe, better understanding the changes happening around us to come up with better solutions to serve us here on Earth and to save our planet. When it comes to space technology and the sciences also, there's a lot that we learn that we can apply here on Earth, which we actually are today. Many of the technologies that we use in our daily lives uh, that either help us and improve the quality of life or save lives uh, or finding solutions for big challenges, uh, a lot of it originated from knowledge or technology that was gained from the space sector. Expo Space Week is an important uh, milestone in, in Expo as, as a whole. Uh, space is, is, is a new area that the UAE is, is looking into and trying to build capacity and capability in it uh, for bigger uh, reasons, for bigger objectives, which is basically to serve our economy and to build capacity and capability that will help us make us more of a competitive economy, not just regionally, but globally. Uh, at the same time, also gain knowledge and set of skills that we need to address national challenges that we have, whether it's in water security or food security. Uh, so it's about building that science base we want. Of course, we're not going to solve these problems by just sending a mission to Mars, but the people and the knowledge and the ecosystem that gets created eventually will find us solutions to, for, for these challenges. Mm -hmm.